when narrow-minded people mentally forced you to like come out the closet or say I'm this or that and be yourself. That's what you mean by be mm -hmm. yourself. And uh, how does it make you feel? Just like everybody else now? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, um, it's who I am. I don't have mm -hmm. to pretend in front of uh, my coworkers or my peers and my friends. And they give you my respect friends. for it? Absolutely. So sure. how about you? Um, yeah, just being happy and, you know, being myself and being open and honest. And well, how old were you when you first had an inkling that you were gay? Um, about seven. And how about you? That's about the same age. Well, that's a hell of a time to, to really have to hold it that long, you know? That, when you get older and you find out, well, what the heck? I am what I am, like Popeye, shiver me timbers, I am what I am. And I don't think anybody should be put down for any reason unless they're murderers or something like that. Well, what's the negative part of a gay life? Definitely being judged, I yeah. think, you know. Well, do you get judged sneakily with attitudes or verbally or everything? You have any Everybody stories? Mm -hmm. You see a lot of body language, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of staring. You know, a lot of whispering off the to the nasty side. Looks and so on. Yeah, or you know, just get long. You know, people will look at you for. You have you know, any kind of incidents you, you can down. tell us about? Wow, I haven't had a been in that situation because basically now I don't even pay attention to it. You know, I yeah. I, I ignore it. That's what you did. Yeah, you know, growing yourself. up and first coming out and um, trying to deal with that part of me now that I'm gay and I'm out openly with my family, I still cared about what people thought about me. Yeah. And that was just because I was young. I had really short hair, and that was back in the you know late 80s. And um, some little kid said, Mom, is that a boy or a girl? And I was really, um, I was offended. offended. Yeah. And it was just a young kid, just yeah. a young boy. Because he wasn't and, used to it. You know, and his mom, and I don't even know what his parents said to him, but um, it really offended me to think that they couldn't tell the difference if I was boy or girl. And I think I was probably going through that transition uh -huh. of being sporty, and I wasn't sure how I but wanted my hair. Know. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I it was common to have short hair back then. Yeah. What about you? Have you had incidents like that? Um, I think it took me it took me a long time to be able to be able to come out because I needed to be able, like not care what everyone thought. Uh huh. Um, well, what about your children? Do do they accept it? Uh, Tamara has a son. Uh huh. Um, I th I think Jaden does accept it. I, I met her a son. He's cool. He's like a cool Tito coming up. He's, that boy's going to be cool. He's really at 10 years old, the diary of Anne Frank. He's on the ball. Yeah. Uh, so, But you know what other thing? Now I'm heterosexual, and back in my rock and roll hippie days when everybody had long hair, I was going up the steps, and it was even longer than this. I was young and manly man, manly man. And I was walking up the steps, and these two big guys came. And my friend and I were walking up the steps, and I said, hey, wait a minute, Jeff, I'll be right with you. And he, he whistled. And I just jumped down the step backwards and knocked him out and looked at the other guy and said, you want to say, he said, man, I didn't whistle, I didn't do anything. And that's what they were doing to heterosexuals and didn't know me at all. And you know what? I'm not a little guy. So if, you know, he must have been looking for a car wreck, and I gave it to him. Mm -hmm. But I never even thought, well, if I went through that, what do gays go through? You know? And that's what I think. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, not before they do unto you. Or make new friends but keep the old for one is silver and the other is gold. I think we forget what we're taught. And I think that people, the uh, fanatics, I think that they're not practicing what they preach. Mm -hmm. You know, just that simple. It's like, uh, I'm a Christian, I believe in God, but I don't believe when Jesus comes, all the Jews are going to die or the Arabs are going to get stomach pains or whatever. I mean, everybody, you just can't believe in what you believe. In the old days, you believed in Jesus Christ uh, and he saved your uh, soul, you were a good Christian. Today, you gotta wear a sunglasses, you gotta be able to see the like, oh, thank you very much, you know? And, and when, when did people start making everything we're involved in, regardless of the subject or the topic, that we have to do it their way or we're bad people? Mm -hmm. Anything else on these subjects, good or bad? Um, I just think that people need to be a little more open-minded. That you don't you don't have that normal lesbian or mm -hmm. gays look. You know, it's you, you're going to have different stereotypes. Well, let me ask you this: If I go to see one of my corpses, they see a Italians walking by. They think Italians are supposed to talk and uh, they all know each other and all friends. Or blacks are supposed to or Latinos. When they see gays going by, they say, oh, there goes your homegirl, your homeboy. Do they think the same thing? They should be your friend? Um, I think so. I think they're like that still. 
That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because nobody, I always say, the Canadians don't like the French, the French don't like the Germans, the Germans don't like the English, the English don't like the Irish, and the Irish Catholics don't like the Irish Pro uh, Protestants, and there's more black on black, or Sicilian on Italian, and so on and so on. Nobody likes anybody. But, no, let me ask you something else. Is there more, and I've heard this from people, and what do I know? That there's more promiscu uh, uh, more promiscuous, gays are more promiscuous than heterosexuals. You know, I thought everybody was a slut. I don't care what their preference <laughs> are, you know. And then, like I tell people, I'm not prejudiced against anybody. I hate everybody the same. <laughs> if, uh, take for granted, if I'm out of town and Purple Marsers come in, I hate them too. And I'll come back in a couple of days and choose my few friends from their group and go on. So what do you think? Is it, are gays more promiscuous then? Um, I, gay men are promiscuous, but I think, I think everybody's promiscuous. Um, you mean heterosexuals too? Heterosexuals yeah. too, yeah. And it's not even just males. I think women are too. It just depends on the individual. But gay men are very more open to being promiscuous. Mm -hmm. um, there's, they don't hide anything. I mean, well, it's you know, not uncommon to see. I can understand how heterosexuals feel uncomfortable un, uh, when you see guys show up in chaps and all that, like with the gay pride parade, all the crazy stuff. But then there are heterosexuals that do crazy. Just just look at a soccer game or something like that where people are painted and all this crazy mm -hmm. stuff too. Mm -hmm. But uh, they say, so, so the, well, men probably are more promiscuous, period, you know. Yeah, I think in general. I, I mean, that's just my opinion. So it's not just a sexual preference. It's just human beings being human beings, huh? What are the gay clubs like? Or are, are there gay clubs around? Uh, yeah, there are. They've got, I mean, they got some gay clubs. Back in the clubs. East Coast, I remember there were, you know. Yeah, there. It depends. It, there's different. There's guy clubs. Uh, a lot of the gay women do not support the, the um, gay clubs mm -hmm. in the area. Why? Because th they're yep. more into staying home, being Privacy. more hob, more homebodies. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was growing up, yeah, I was in the clubs a lot. You know, it was just a thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, there was nothing else going on, and. We just well, it's go out like dancing. Victor Victoria. They had the best entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember I had a friend who was really PO'd for weeks. He went with a friend of his to a gay uh, bar, to, and they were heterosexuals, to see this program because it was this gay entertainer was just fabulous, like Julie uh, Andrews and Victor Victoria. And he sat there rapping to this fine little tasty mama all night. And at the end, she kissed him, and she was leaving, and he went to grab her, and he, no, no, you, you, we're going home. And his friend grabbed her and said, what are you doing? That's a guy. You know? <laughs> then he got mad and started spitting his mouth out, wanted to go beat the guy. He said, wait a minute, you did the rapping. The person did not come to you, you know. So I think that the, the main thing is homophobia. In this country, the land of the free and the brave, they don't want us to be brave or free. They want you to follow along, and if you do something uh, not just uh, gay lifestyle, but even we had a, a guest on that talked about medical marijuana and so on and so forth. And I'm sure there'll be a, not a lot of things that are going to feel to get you upset when Cultito's done with you. But I'm going to let you guys be uh, historical uh, members of the Cultito Club. So I'm going to have your badges sent out and everything. Nice. Cultito Club of America. And then people just, hey, cool. They, they won't even go into your name, you know. A disciple, there's an old Sicilian saying that revenge is served on a dis that's cold. Hey, Pazano, Capiche, Ascolto, un momento, Ascolto. This book takes you from Riverside and San Bernardino Mountains to Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, New York, to Italy, to Sicily. It's an international crime thriller. It has the Italian mob, the Chinese triads, the Russian mob, the Jewish mob, the Irish mob. This is a real book. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. If you want good reading, exciting and thrilling, A Dish Served Cold by Tito Love. I think because people are afraid. I mean, if you touch me, I'll turn into a homo, you know? Homo. And that's what it is. They're afraid of something they don't understand, you know? But it's like I say before, it's not the gay people to have the little boys and little girls in the bottom of churches. And that's Christian, uh, Islamic, uh, Jewish, all of them, all of them have been busted for doing stuff like that. But it's not the gays. 
Gays usually stick to their own crowd, so how can it bother you? Is it make you mad just because they're alive? What well, do people say the thing about the colors and creeds and mm -hmm. ethnic groups and religion? And as well, what do you think is the best way uh, to smooth things over so everybody accepts everybody? Now, my friends, uh, I mean, I've happened to have a lot of friends all over the world who just happen to be something, a color or this or that or gay or that. It doesn't make any difference because if you're something different than the person next door, they'll find a reason to hate you. you oh, know? sure. So what do you think the best thing we can do to smooth things over? Well, you know, my, some of my best friends are heterosexuals. I don't have, I have gay friends, mm -hmm. but it's not like I stay in the gay community. Careful, there's uh, chemicals in there that'll turn you straight. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I did nice that. Nice job, I nice job, well, this, I'm the funny guy, they're telling you what's going on. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? I know you heard me because you're probably smart. Are you <laughs> saying? Um, but my best friends are, are straight, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I have a lot of straight people that I, I'm close to. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like I have to stay in the gay community. I You're just a regular person. I'm just no, yeah. a normal person. I'm a, you know, and I just happen to be gay and I like to have women around me that yeah. I that I'm close to. Well, so. you know, that's that's the same way I am. I, I don't judge my friends. Who the hell am I? Am I that gr I am kind of cool, but I'm not that great. You know that I can judge others if I just take care of Tito's business. I will indeed have a wonderful mm -hmm. life, you know. Oh, uh, uh, the best way for us all to get, like Rodney King, can we just get along? You know, for everybody to, to mind their business and get along and judge people. Or I judge people on how they treat me. You know, I don't care what boat their grandmammy or somebody came over on. Mm -hmm. I care now that we're all here how they're going to treat me. Mm -hmm. And I think just um, being happy and showing that um, they don't have anything to fear when they, you know, it's just I'm still me and... Um, I don't know, I'm just hoping that it helps people accept it and well, be okay you know with what? everything. There'll be some teenager who's doing the same thing you used to do, hiding it. Maybe since they see how cool you are, because they're members of the club, that they will uh, be able to come out and say, Mom, Dad, I'm gay. You know? I mean, nobody wants their kid to be any different. I don't want you to have one blue eye and one brown eye. I want you to just... Uh, but stuff, stuff happens. Deal with it. I have to say that very correctly, you know, so I don't want people, he swore, he, he just, and, and, but, but uh, I think when our, uh, like, grandchildren grow up, this will be old hat. I think all this stuff will be old hat. There will always be prejudice in this country because there's so many different nationalities. In fact, I think before you can leave another country and come here, that people say, uh, how's your driving record? Mine's fine, you're not allowed to leave. How's your driving record? Well, I have three tickets. Yeah, you can go to America. So when you get out of here, we get all the bad ethnic drivers from all <laughs> over the world, and all the good ones aren't allowed to leave the country, and that's why our roads are so bad. Yeah, you ought to clean up the roads. I'm going to talk to the police soon anyhow. <laughs> uh, now, before we end this particular segment, yeah, they're going to be back again on future programs, but we're going to end this segment now. But... What would you like that we haven't talked about or we haven't fully uh, explained about your lifestyle or you as a person that you really want other gays out there who are uh, troubled minds or youngsters uh, that you'd really like to think? Just look at the uh, camera. One, pick one of the cameras. The younger generation has a really hard time, the ones that are afraid mm -hmm. to tell their parents or they don't know how to deal with it because mm -hmm. it's just emotions that you don't know what to do with them. You know, until you can find someone that you can talk to. So, you know, I suggest to see a counselor and, and be yourself. That's a great and, idea. And, be, um, be and if you're tight be. with your mother and dad, then talk with them. Yeah. Because even if it shocks them, they love you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They love you. It'll set them back, but, you know, they, they will accept it and, you know, just make good choices. And I want you to know that they're mad as hell and they're not going to take it anymore. Let's tell them. We're mad, mad as hell, hell and we're, we're not, not going to take, take it, it anymore. anymore. I'm Tito Love. This is Lauren. This is Tamara. You know, sponsors pay for this local program. <laughs> Give me the money. Your message is important. <laughs> I kid, I kid. This program is brought to you by Maine Performance USA Magazine.